Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this table diffusion tutorial, we're going to learn about a new project where you can sketch something and then that sketch we're going to translate into a picture. So I am calling this project Shakalaka Boom Boom. So I don't know how many of you are uh, from India, but I grew up in 90s in India and then that time there was a very popular uh, TV serial called Shakalaka Boom Boom where there is a kid and that kid has got a magic pencil and the kid draws something and then they would have a graphic uh, visualization and then that, that object would come real. For now, at least I cannot make something real. I cannot, you know, I, I'm not 3D printing or anything. But what I can act actually do is uh, create an application where you can draw something and then that gets uh, some kind of, you know, um, realism um, just on the 2D, not on the 3D itself. And that is exactly what we're going to build. And in this process, you will learn how to use Gradio to build a full stack application. You will also you learn how to do image to image generation using stable diffusion. These are the kind of learnings that you'll get from this video. But if you're just here for fun, you will have the fun. And if you are, if you have heard about Shakalaka Boom Boom, please let me know in the comment section. I would just love to see um, how, how many people know Shakalaka Boom Boom. So, but otherwise, without further ado, let's get started with the code. Uh, first, I would like to show you what is it, how does it look like? This is the interface. And as you can see, I'm just calling it, uh, I'm just calling it pen to pick Shakalaka Boom Boom. I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to draw something first and I'm going to show you how it looks like. Um, so sometimes, you know, I might get a very terrible uh, result as well, like for like for, for you to just keep in mind. So I'm going to just say, uh, let me put a rectangle and something here and I'm going to say a smartphone and I'm going to submit it and then let's see what is going to happen. So I've, I've just created something and I said like what my interest is a smartphone and then it is running and uh, it's going to finally create i think the inference takes about like 13 seconds and uh, yeah amazing we have got a smartphone that's that is amazing um i don't know the quality of smartphone but the smartphone is there so this is exactly what we are going to build in this video so at the end of this video you will be able to build an application like this and then you'll be able to share the link with your friends so they can also play shakalaka boom boom with you okay cool so um yeah Again, this idea came from Shakalaka Boom Boom and also like uh, in a lot of Twitter conversation I saw people are comparing stable diffusion with Shakalaka Boom Boom. Let's see how the 3D printing is going to go. Uh, this Google Collab Notebook will be in the YouTube description. You don't have to code any of those things here like what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for you to understand what is happening. But otherwise, you can just go below the like button, click the YouTube description, expand it. You will see the Google Collab Notebook, open it and then you can start using it right away. So first I'm checking what kind of GPU I've got. I've got a Tesla T4 machine, which is good. The next thing is we are going to install the libraries that we need. Uh, in this case, we need diffusers, transformers, FTFY, Gradio. I don't need to explain anymore, like why are we installing all these things? But the main thing is diffusers is the library from Hugging Face that helps us use stable diffusion algorithm, like a model in this case. Gradio is the library that um, Hugging Face acquired some time back, which helps us creating this full stack application. Once you do that, then the next thing is you need to do from Hugging Face Hub import notebook login. Once you invoke notebook login, you're going to get a small model where you're going to enter your um, Hugging Face token. So this is this is important for them to ensure that this model is not being used um, for wrong purposes. So first thing is you need to go to the model page, uh, click the terms of services and you have to accept it. And after you do that, then you come here and then you know you copy the token and paste it. If you're not familiar with that, please, please check my first video on stable diffusion using Hugging Face uh, that has a step by step guide of how you can enable the model or use the model. Once that is done, uh, like I said in my previous image to image video, um, this is a script thanks to the Hugging Face team. So Hugging Credit, Hugging Face team. So this is a utility or helper script that has been put together by Hugging Face team. So I'm literally downloading the script and I'm using it. So just to keep in your mind that this uh, this file sits inside the Hugging Face repository. I'm I'm downloading it. And I'm going to use it like a library. That's what I'm going to do it. So wget and then get the image to image.py uh, file from Hugging Face repository. The next thing is import PyTorch. Um, re request is not required in this case because we are not um, we are not downloading any image. Uh, a pill for image processing um, bytes again. This is more important if you are using request, not required. I'll delete it just to keep it simple. So we need pillow uh, for uh, uh, image processing and then from image to image, which which we just downloaded as a Python file, we need two things. We need stable diffusion image to image pipeline and then pre-process. 
After we have that imported, then we need to set the device CUDA because I'm on GPU. To quickly show you, I'm, I'm on GPU thanks to Google um, Collab GPU. So I'm using CUDA. If you are on CPU, then you know you don't have to do anything here, but uh, um, yeah, if you can call it CPU. But in this case, GPU, uh, this is ideally, this model is ideally supposed to be used on a GPU for you to get faster inference. The next thing is we need to define a pipe object that is uh, basically downloading the model and then setting the floating point values. And then, you know, um, it's kind of a quantization where you set the, uh, you, you ask the model to use uh, the, the torch floating point floating 16 and then you you're saying that you you want to use a uh, use authentication token which is um, which is the token that is stored here for you for you to download the model if I, at any point if the model is not getting downloaded just please remember that maybe you didn't do authentication properly maybe you didn't do, do terms of services properly it could be one of those things just keep that in mind at this point uh, we are completely set up like our model is downloaded um, all the required libraries are imported. So we are now getting into the phase where we want to develop a full stack application. Now, if you see this full stack application, you can see this full stack application has got a title and it has got two sections. Let's say the left hand section is the input, the right hand section is the output. Inside input, we have got two components up and down. The first is an image canvas where you can draw something like a, like a sketch pad. And the second is a text box where you can type some text. So you can, you have a image canvas, then you have a text and on the right hand side, if you see, you have got the image as an output. So this is basically your app. Now for you to design this app. So you need something called an interface class. Just to remind you, Gradio has got a latest blocks, which is highly advanced. It helps you change a lot of things. It gives you a lot of the depth in which you can make changes to a Gradio application like adding CSS, like creating a row of components, you know, rearranging the components in a certain way. Right now I'm trying to build a very simple application. So I'm sticking to interface, but if you're already using Gradia, I would uh, strongly encourage you to check out blocks as well. That gives you, um, that, that gives you enough ability that enables you to customize your Gradio application in a very nice way. But inside my interface, if you talk about interface, which is what we are using Gradio interface, interface requires a function. Um, and the title is quite self-evident. Then we have the inputs, then we have the output, and then we are launching it. I have launched it with the debug is equal to true to understand if there is any error. But otherwise, you, you can launch without that. Let me first stop. Yeah, I can launch without debug is equal to true as well, um, which will not show me any errors if there is an error. So now we need a function. We need certain inputs we need certain outputs and we know that our output is an image. So that's quite straightforward. So gr.image is our output. Now our input first is an image canvas that I said. So gr.image source is canvas and what kind of image that you want to send out. You want a pillow image like I, I want the function to get a pillow image. So imagine the function is in the middle. The function is going to get input from the input function is going to give output to the image, uh, sorry, to the output section. So function is somewhere in the middle. It's going to gain input from the input section. It's going to send output to the output section. So the image that you're going to display here should be written by the function. And the function should ideally have two arguments parameters. That is one from the image, one from the text box. So that's what image and text box. Now, when we see the function, you can see exactly the same thing. The function should, should return an image which is ideally the output image and the function should get two arguments, two parameters, which is um, one is the image. The second one is a text prompt and we are calling it prompt because we have the label prompt here. So this is how the interface class is defined. So inside interface, we have a function which is going to be called when you launch this application, the title, uh, and then you have got the inputs. And then you have got the outputs inside inputs. We've got two components. One is the image canvas. The second one is the text box. And then in the output, we have got a simple image. So I hope now you understand like in just like less than like 10 lines of Python code, we have successfully created a full stack application. Now what is inside the predict function inside the predict function? I'm collecting the prompt from the user who is going to tell me what the object that they want to see. But instead of giving that as it is 
to the stable diffusion model. Uh, some things that I've learned from the stable diffusion community on their Discord channel. I'm just collecting a lot of details about the image and then passing it. So this is basically string concatenation. For example, when you say smartphone, it just takes the word smartphone and then says a smartphone with a vibrant color background, photorealistic, dynamic lighting, beautiful trending on art station, wallpaper, dream 4K, award winning, lovely pastel colors, ethereal, elegant. It's going to suffix everything to the smartphone and then it is going to give that as a prompt to the stable diffusion model. This is to make sure that the image that we're getting is not a very simple um, sketch, but you know, something that is colorful, vibrant, and uh, it's quite realistic. So next, after that, we have to take the image and then we have to convert the image, resize the image, pre-process the image. This pre-process comes from image to image. Once that is done, the next step is we are going to take the image. We are going to take the prompt and then we are going to create the images. And then the first image is displayed. Just a little bit of note about 0.8 strength. Um, this is something that a couple of people have noted in my videos and then also pointed out in the comment section. So the reason I'm using 0.8 strength is because right now what we are doing is image to image. It's also known as init image where instead of just using a text as an input prompt to create an image, you're also using an in image. So now you have got two things. One, you have got a text One you have got an image. So how do you balance this in such a way that you get the flavor of the image, but also the text is taken seriously. And that's why we are using a prom uh, a strength value that is closer to one where if you are, if your strength is completely one, this is going to behave exactly like a text to image model where the init image would be completely disregarded. If your strength is zero, then the text is completely disregarded and the init image is completely used. So on a scale of zero to one, You've got the init image and then you've got the text and then we are trying to balance it in between. So 0.8 is not a number that you should stick to. So you can change based on the kind of images that you get. But the reason why I've used 0.8 is I want more weightage from the text prompt, but I also want some flavor from the image. Why is it? Because it's a very plain image, a plain sketch. If you give more weightage to the image, not to the text, then ultimately you will get a very plain sketch like that. That's not what I wanted to achieve. What I wanted to achieve is take the sketch and give me a photorealistic image. So that's why I'm using a 0.8 strength. So now given that we have the predict function ready and we have the interface ready, uh, let me run it. So did I change anything? I didn't change anything. Paint to pick shakalaka boom boom with gradient and stable diffusion. SD should be fine, I think. Okay, uh, did I change anything? Let me just rerun it. I don't know if I change anything here. I'm rerunning the function and then I'm rerunning this interface and it's going to launch live here. There are a couple of things that you can play with. For example, uh, you can set a live attribute where um, while you are drawing things will happen. So we don't want it. So right now, let's say you don't want, you don't want such a smaller space. All you have to do is click this gradual link that will show this image, this application on a full scale, like anybody in the world can see it. Like this is your URL. So right now I've got this. Um, so what do I want to do? I wanted to draw, let's say a snowman. Okay. A snowman. And I want to submit. Every inferencing takes about like uh, 13 seconds um, in, like while I experimented. So after 13 seconds, we can probably see um, what is it going to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite curious to see. Oh, so I mean, like if you, if you remember the Shakaraka Boom series, like they would, they would put a, like some, some magical music to say that, you know, what the kid drew actually became realistic. And this is quite amazing. Like I've taken this and I've, um, I've gotten the, I've gotten the snowman. Um, and again, like if you see it is, uh, I can change the prompt in such a way that it looks almost like this, but also, you know, it can have different effects. So based on the prompt, it can change. Let me clear this. And, uh, I want to something that I wanted to try is I want to put like this, a girl seeing the universe through the windows. Windows, Windows, Microsoft operating system. 
So now I've created something and then I've given a detailed prompt, uh, like a girl seeing through, seeing the universe through her windows. Let's, let's see what is going to happen. And this is nice. So like it has taken my picture and then it has tried to create something. If you don't like this image, then you can click submit and then for the same prompt, it's going to try with a different seed value. So every time you're going to get something different. So if you want to improve this application, you can basically, you know, create parameters like how to add seed value and those kind of things and that will improve. So, okay. In, in this case, the girl is outside and probably she's seeing through the universe. So that's nice. Let me try one more. Um, I wanted to try. Okay. Let's. Milky Way. I don't know. Let's see. It's a, it's a, it's a very plain thing. I've just put a bunch of dots, which I assume it could be stars. And then I've said, uh, I want Milky Way and let's see what is the outcome of this. Okay. It's, it's pretty decent. Like we have got a bunch of stars and I would, I would say it looks good. Like I can, I can keep Milky Way. Um, I can, I can put something like, uh, you know, snowman standing in front of a Milky Way. I don't know if it is going to again work. So, but this is how you build and then you iterate. Like a lot of these things are, you know, you iterate and then try and then see if it works out. Um, but, but again, the whole point is like, you can sketch something. Like if you have got kids at home, this is really, a very fun thing to do. Okay. This is nice. So you can ask the kid to draw something and then you can actually do it. And you know, as a matter of fact, all these things, we are doing it for free. Thanks to the generous stable diffusion community, hugging face community, and also uh, Google collab for giving us a few free computation. Uh, but, but still, I mean, this is completely fascinating that I can just um, open it on Google collab and I can do it. And um, the, 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 this, this absolutely looks amazing. So, so to quickly summarize what we did in this video is we, I mean, I, I gave you a bit of intro about Chakalaka Boom Boom, where the kid has a magic pencil, this, this pencil, and then he draws and then something comes up. Then we set our machine as GPU, checked whether we have got GPU. We installed the required libraries, authenticated our notebook um, with Hugging Face token. And then we downloaded the image to image script that the Hugging Face team has put together, thanks to the team. And then we imported required libraries downloaded the model set, created the pipe object, set our device as GPU, and then started building our Gradio application where we first built the predict function, which is going to be used with the interface class where we have got the input as image canvas and also the text prompt that takes this and then creates a photorealistic image. I hope this video was helpful to you. The code or the Google collab will be in the YouTube description. Definitely check it out. Um, but otherwise, um, if you have any question, let me know in the comment section. If you create something interesting, tag me on Twitter. I would love to see what, what you have created. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. Take care. Stay safe. Happy coding.